Good morning. It's Tuesday, September 5th. Happy day after Labor Day. Uh, speaking of Labor Day, uh, Trend Spider. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, they extended the Labor Day sale. So it's 60% off. It's 50% off for uh, the elite level. Elite level is exactly what you want. That gets you my algorithm. It gets you my watch list. It gets you everything that you need to trade like me. Starting tomorrow, I am traveling to Dallas. I am going to Dallas uh, until Thursday of next week. Uh, I won't be in Dallas the whole time, but I'll be traveling. So the podcast will be down. If you want to um, uh, you know, do your own scans, if you want to use my algorithm, if you want to find stocks to trade, um, the elite level is what you need. It's 390 bucks. If you think $390 is too much um, and you won't save money, you won't listen to the algorithm, you won't chart things, blah, 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 it is not plug and play. Understand, it is portfolio management. Uh, and I put out a great newsletter uh, right here, Portfolio Management Strategies. It's free, dailystockpick.substack.com. If you think you are in value investing, if you think you are doing fundamental investing, if you are not doing technical trading, then don't get TrendSpider. If you are doing these first two, you don't need TrendSpider. You don't need charts. If you want to integrate technical trading, you need TrendSpider. You need some type of charting program. There are free ones out there. If you don't want to pay for one, Webull has a free one. Uh, so download Webull. Deposit, there's a link down below. You'll be able to get uh, free stocks. Dep I deposit $1,000 in there. Um, that wasn't much money for me. You can deposit as much as $3 and get free stocks. But for the Trend Spider, remember, it's only got 14 hours left. So if you want it, sign up for it. Um, that's the big one. The other thing that I'm going to include down below also is my Tesla link because they started a Tesla referral program. And the Model S is crazy cheap. The Model Y is crazy cheap. The Model 3 with the new Highland stuff, they're getting rid of their old uh, Model 3s that haven't been updated. Now, the new ones are not hugely upgraded. Um, the only thing that I would like in the new ones is the LED lighting that's across the top and it looks a little cleaner. That's it. But the Model X and the Model Y, if I had to get one right now, I'd get the Model Y. When you use my link, you get three months of FSD, which is full self-driving capability included, plus you get these dollar amounts off. So my link down below, if you're looking into a Tesla, which I think everybody should be looking into, use that link below. Uh, so let's talk about the stock market. I listened to this weekend another On The Tape podcast. Remember last week there was Tony Dwyer on this On The Tape podcast? I listened to On The Tape with Tom Lee. Specifically, Tom Lee goes over how he thinks September is going to be a huge month. You've got a ton of people who are right now putting out there that September is a, a week, traditionally a weak month. Tom Lee thinks it's going to be a huge month. Again, it's on the tape. The link is down below for the Spotify link, but it's on the tape. Better Man with Fun Strats, Tom Lee and Brady Cobb of Sunburn Ca Cannabis. If you want to hear about the cannabis industry, Brady Cobb is an expert in the ca uh, cannabis industry. There are some major changes going on. Uh, he does a phenomenal job of outlining them. He even says, hey, it's not going to be quick, even though the uh, HHS, HHS came out uh, last week and made the, um, the, the uh, suggestion that cannabis should be a class three, class one. I don't even know the details of it, but it was a huge thing, huge change in it. Uh, Biden administration, they're kind of getting on board with legalizing cannabis, and this one's a big one. Brady, Brady outlines it perfectly. So again, on the tape, great podcast. Uh, you should listen to it. Um, let's talk about where we're at right now. Uh, SPY is down 0.35%, 0.36% at 449. You can see that button hook starting to happen. You've still got confirmation here above that nine day. That's the key above that nine day. You can see the MACDs kind of crossing over. The RSI is coming off at 64. That's probably just a little bit overbought. Probably going to take a little bit of a, uh, a break here. If we go to QQQ, uh, QQQ, there's a couple of stats that I have on QQQ. You can see we're still holding that nine day right there. Same thing as SPY. 
It's turning over a little bit. You're coming off a 64 and you're at 61. So you're not as oversold here. You're down only 0.3%. Um, over the last decade, the next week, next week is the worst week on average for the NASDAQ uh, with a mean return of minus 1.16. That's this week. This week, could September surprise everybody uh, who just realized is indeed a weak month historically? Uh, went up 15% year to date after seven months and down in August, like we have been in 2023. September has been higher eight of nine times, and the rest of the year has never been lower. That is from Ryan Detrick here, and I will include the link to this uh, tweet, or do we call it an X now? I don't know. Uh, but this tweet right here, Ryan Detrick, he puts out the numbers and, and he outlines it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten years, ten years, ten examples. And you can see September to December, look at those rates of return. That's pretty good rates of return for like a four or five month period. So um, I will put all of that in the newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter if you want any of the links that you hear in this show. Uh, go over to uh, Linktree, L I N K T R dot E E slash daily stock pick. It has all the links. You got TrendSpider. You got Visible. If you have a phone service where you're paying anything more than $25 a month, Visible is the link. Right here, you save $20 off your first month of service. Um, I have Visible personally. Right here, get Weeble. Uh, use my link, get 12 free stocks, uh, each valued up to $3,000. Uh, it's a great time to join. Savvy Trader, follow all my trades. When you click this link, you get over to Savvy Trader. I have two portfolios. There's the trading portfolio that I actually trade in and the stock uh, core portfolio. The core portfolio is just an even weighted core portfolio. There's 36 stocks. You should be following that. 100% you should be following it. Down here, we have the Substack newsletter. So all of those links are out there. Um Let's see. I'm going to read you my notes here. After five months of strength, August found markets taking a breather. The spy in the QQQ made new monthly lows relative to July lows. So let's look at a monthly because when we look at a monthly, on uh, you don't see even a downturn. I mean, it's just kind of putting in there a capitulation at the previous nine day right there. You have you touched the 50 day back here in January. You've been up. Uh, yeah, we thought August was such a bad month. The period was 1.13. So from top to bottom, it was 1.13% in, T in, T in QQQ. Uh, we talked about how in July, we traded TQQQ for a nice 10% gain. Uh, that, that period was a 3.68% from top to bottom. Again, August was only 1.13 from top to bottom. It never really went up. That was the issue. So we never felt like we were up. Now that we're in September, which is historically the weakest month of the year, will the seasonal trend of weakness persist? This month, uh, SPY closed at $450, which is down 1.62%, making a new low relative to last month's low, but closing well above it. The upper Bollinger Band lies just above the price, which could act as a resistance in the future, and mo momentum remains bullish. So let's look at SPY because they talk about the Bollinger Band on the monthly, and we're going to look at the monthly on this one. And then we'll go back to QQQ on the monthly. But what they're talking about the Bollinger Bands are these light shaded areas. You can see that Bollinger Band right up there at 467, that could provide some resistance level on the monthly. On the monthly, you're not even down at the 50-day. The 50-day the is still at 384. You're not even down at the 9-day, which is that green line at 432. So we still have confirmation on the SPY. Uh, I do think that this month we go higher. It, there is only a 17% chance that's priced into the market that the, the Fed uh, raises their rates in September. That, to me, indicates if we do, do get a pause in September, uh, and Tom Lee made this, this point, if we get a pause in September, the market is likely going to, to factor in that that's the last rate increase that we see. So at that point... The market is going to price in reductions, which will mean, again, if we see a reduction, my, my point, and I think Tom's and everybody else's, if we see a reduction, yes, the, the stock market might go up, but the reality of a, uh, of a reduction uh, will most likely mean something broke in, the, in the, the economy. So that's the monthly of SPY. Let's look at the monthly of QQQ. This month, the, the QQQ closed at 377. 
uh, making it the strongest performer of the group, but much like SPY, made a new monthly low relative to last month low. The price is trading just below the upper Bollinger Band, and momentum is bullish. Uh, momentum on this one is is bullish. A- again, we pointed out the first couple of weeks of August with earnings. You had big earnings, but nothing uh, nothing really came about it because nobody really blew things out of the water. And earning good earnings were priced in. So you're seeing right below here that top of that Bollinger Band is 396. The the all time high back here is uh, 408. 408 back here in November 2021. Now you go to 404 in December. So 408 is what we're looking at. There's going to be resistance here at 396. There's going to be resistance at 400. If you hold that 400 and look, you're still positive on that MACD. Now the RSI is at 62, so you're a little bit overbought. Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, all three have printed matching bearish hammer candles in their monthly charts as the market heads into what is historically its weakest month. Let's look at a monthly of Apple. Uh, You can look at Tesla and Microsoft yourself, but what a a hammer candle is, is the right-hand side has a high mark. So it closes at a high mark in the month. That's a bearish symbol because it's got to come down from there. Uh, We can look at this one. I don't even see a hammer candle. It's a reverse hammer. So maybe it's bearish, but it closed lower than it opened up. You opened up here September with, with a, uh, what are you down? Right now you're down 0.37 to 188. Again, I say Apple, get it while you can. I mean, when that iPhone 15 comes out, everything's been leaked about it already. I just don't know what what's, what's you know, what it's going to take to get it. Okay, let's look at some some individual stocks. Uh, I don't want SSBP. I want S. Sentinel. I posted this on Twitter. And then we'll go back to Twitter and we can look at mine. Uh, I think Sentinel, which is an antivirus name. Uh, antivirus. Let's go little cam because I think I was uh, covering most of that. But we'll, we'll look at Sentinel here. And we'll look at it in the four hour. And we'll pull this back. Uh, we need to shrink this down. We need to shrink this down right here because, uh, and I'm going to move that back there. Um, There is a gap here, and that gap goes all the way. Let's shrink this. Boom, now we're down. Okay, there we go. It's a little bit, it's a little bit stretched up here, but uh, you can see. So here's the close on uh, September 1st, on, on 9.30. It seemed to open up. It opened up at 17.26. Its high went to 18.35. Uh, right now, you're trading at 17.17. This is what a gap fill potentially looks like. Uh, their earnings this time were good. So essentially, they lost $0.15 cents, uh, last, er, last quarter, and they said, hey, we're, we're just not going to do well, blah, blah, blah. Then this quarter, um, here on August 31st on Friday, they came out and they said, yeah, we're doing pretty well. You know what? We're doing pretty well. So what do you have here? You have a gap from the last earnings, which was from there, all the way down here. You've started to fill this gap. Good earnings? Well, between now and the next earnings, I totally expect you to fill this gap back up to 20. Totally expect it to be filled back up to 20. I posted on Twitter. We can go and look. If you're not following me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter. Um, QQQ Wedge, by the way, that that AI interview was fantastic this morning. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I really, really liked uh, that interview. So if you get a chance, go to my Twitter and watch that interview. Um, the guy is phenomenal. He, he made a point about grain um, having only 2% of the labor uh, that we had um, uh, back in a hundred years ago. So this is this is the chart that I posted. Want to see a gap fill? Uh, this is cybersecurity, and it's a little bit better on this uh, this look at it. But you can see right here that's the that's the gap, and you're seeing ten point seven two from there. I think that one gets it, and you're even lower today. So Sentinel is on my watch list. I'm looking at it, not necessarily buying it. Uh, IWM Russell 2000 sees its first monthly MACD bull, uh, bull cross up since November 2020. So let's go look at IWM. Uh, IWM, so you know, is small to medium businesses. And if we look at the monthly, <clears throat> we'll look at a monthly on this one. Uh, there you go. There's the MACD cross up right there. 
It's the monthly MACD cross-up. Uh, the last one you saw was here. Yeah, November 2020. So is this, look at what it did when it crossed up. It crossed up right here in August 2020. Um, yeah, they say in November. I see it crossing up kind of before. Maybe it's November. But here, you went from 154 up to 238. IWM, it's an ETF. Uh, since 2000, when a MACD has happened, uh, this has happened nine other times since 2000, the following month was green six of the nine times with an average return of 1.73. So if you want an IWM uh, uh, levered ETF and you have TrendSpider, go over to my, uh, my list, uh, levered ETFs to trade. There is a Russell 2000 in here. I'm just not sure which one it actually is. Uh, SMDD, SRTY, uh, that's the short of the Russell T 2000. Uh, I think URTY, URTY is the up. So my algorithm has you in URTY since 39.30. You're seeing a little bit of weakness on it today. Maybe you buy it for a month. That's what happened to us in, Jan in uh, July when we took a look at it. Uh, the most anticipated earnings for this week, C C3 AI. The symbol is AI. Um, UiPath, which the symbol is Path. Zscaler, ZS, which goes right to Sentinel and Palo Alto and uh, CrowdStrike. GME, ChargePoint, DocuSign. I would not invest in ChargePoint, by the way. Uh, GitLab, Trip, uh, Trip.com, Dave & Buster's, and Planet Labs. Uh, C3 AI is the most interesting one. Remember this one. Uh, this one uh, on the last time, they ran from 18 all the way up to 42, uh, let's see, 44 uh, before their earnings last time. This one, in, in, in difference, this one has run down to $30. Uh, I do think that they are, they are going to do some hype. Uh, I think they are going to mention AI probably 900 times. So I, I think you watch this one. I, I don't know that I'd necessarily get into this one. I am not getting into this one. I think this company uh, is filled with shysters. If you look at Hindenburg Research did a, a, a hit article on them, uh, how it changed from an internet of things company uh, to a energy company to a um, to back to a uh, an AI company. So the CEO, when he's on CNBC, I just don't like him. He talks about, you know, uh, AI being like a Google text box. Well, you're not putting text into AI. AI is called, you know, basically it knows what you're going to search for, when you're going to search for it, and, and what the response that you want. So that's AI. And again, go and look at, at this interview if you want. Follow my, st uh, my Twitter. It's uh, Daily Stock Pick 3 is my Twitter page because Daily Stock Pick was taken, to be perfectly honest with you. But today uh, I posted this AI interview, and it's, it's actually phenomenal. It's down, uh, down here. This AI interview right now with Mustafa Suleiman. He's fantastic. Uh, he brought up, what did he say? Here, here, here's the quote. A kilo of grain today uses only 2% of the labor it needed 100 years ago. And we're seeing that type of trajectory with white collar work. That's the expectation. So job market right now is good. Blah, blah, blah. Watch it. Uh, some upgrades. Podcast favorite Oracle. Got an upgrade from Barclays. Target price of 150. This one was up 1%. Uh, 122 is where it's trading at. Uh, I would like to see you buy it under 120. I think that's the goal here is under 120. You're seeing it kind of put in some capitulation here. Uh, the Bollinger Bands are widening up. Typically means that it could be going for a run. Right now you have confirmation. So my guess is the run would be up if we are going up. Their earnings are coming out September 11th. Uh, AXP. American Express, they got an upgrade with a price target of 200. This one has been falling and falling hard. Today they're up 0.4%. Uh, uh, the algorithm has you in at 160. I think that's probably a pretty good price to actually get in on this one. Um, hold on one second, let me look. Okay. I had to see if my dog had run out. One dog ran out, but the other dog is still in here. 160 on American Express. Price target is 200. And if you want to see all the price targets, just go over to Finviz and you type in AXP, 
which is American Express, you can see the average price target is 181. Uh, most recently, RBC Capital. There you go. There's the upgrade. Today, sector performed to outperform 197 to 200. So you can look at American Express. And if you ever want to see these, you just go over there. Lowe's uh, got an upgrade. Uh, this one with a price target of 282. It's trading at $230 right now. Remember, take these price targets with a grain of salt. They just tell you that it's going up. Uh, my guess is you probably want to be closer to the 50-day on this one, which is at 225. Again, you're not going to notice if we go all the way to 282, you ain't going to notice if you bought it at 225 or if you bought it at 230. You're just going to be happy it got to 282. Uh, Domino's Pizza, uh, expanding their uh, menu, blah, blah, blah. This one, price target 450, upgraded with a price target of 450. Crazy, crazy good one. Uh, I recently found this dude on YouTube. Uh, Wealthy Adventure, I think, is uh, the name of the channel. Um, I like him. <clears throat> I like him a lot. He's got common sense stuff. Uh, I don't know his name, but he really does it good. Here's four ETFs to buy and hold forever. A and those four ETFs, just so you know, are VOO, VTI, VUG, and VYM, all Vanguard, all Vanguard. I'll put the link in the newsletter. So subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, if you want to buy it, what he points out in this this um, this uh, this video is if you want to buy an ETF, sell a put that's future dated. <clears throat> that way, if the ETF comes down, then you actually, uh, worst case is you buy the ETF. Because ETFs are so far um, you know, outdated and blah, 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 uh, not outdated, but because you can buy uh, puts uh, that are future or sell puts that are future dated, uh, if the worst thing is that the, the st you're wrong about the stock market being bull bullish and the stock market actually comes down, then you sell that put and you're forced to buy it. That's, that's essentially what he says. If you're into options, it's a really good strategy in my mind. Um, PayPal earnings. The gap continues to act as a magnet. Here is the uh, picture, PayPal earnings. Uh, it's an earnings gap, and it's from the last earnings. So you know, here's the picture from TrendSpider. <clears throat> it continues to be, we talked about this um, earnings gap where it gapped from 72 down to 66. This is a four-hour uh, out, four-hour uh, look at it. If we go over here, we can look at our um, algorithm because our algorithm is in a four-hour candle. And you can see the earnings gap right there that they're talking about, right here between 66 and 72. I think you're you're looking at that gap fill. I think you're looking at that gap fill. Again, I bought a little bit more at 60. I hold a bunch of this uh, at a higher price. I think at 67, 68, somewhere in that neighborhood. I like that. Uh, if you are not subscribed to my weekly stock, his weekly stock is Cisco, CSCO. Uh, uh, this is a Dow component. I think this is easily a $60 stock by the end of the year. I don't think you have a problem holding it. The only thing that worries about me, it worries me about this is this gap between 54. This is the biggest large cap tech and it's at a reasonable price. I think you're fine. Uh, I found an article that I will link in the, uh, the newsletter and energy is huge today. Energy is way up today. This particular article is two oil stocks to buy hand over fist in September. And what are the two? Uh, two of my favorites, Devon and P, uh, PXP, uh, PXD, Pioneer Natural Resources. Uh, both are in the core portfolio. So both are in the core portfolio. Read that one. Um, to go along with this paid, this week's paid newsletter, this is a, a good article. Uh, the four top performing large blend ETFs uh, from Morningstar. I like this article. I, I read this article. Uh, I really like these ETFs. Again, I, I wrote about the ETFs in the newsletter this weekend, um, how I picked my ETFs, why I picked my ETFs. Um, you, you should do your own research in picking ETFs. Don't pick levered ETFs to invest in. Pick the actual core uh, ETF. You can do QQQ. You can do SPY. Uh, these particular ones are IVV, SPHQ, uh, VOO, and SPLG. You will see VOO is kind of a standard. It's either VOO or SPY. Those are the two ones that you really want to get. Um, so 
Uh, let's look. A great interview on AI. I put that one in there. You can go to my Twitter. I'll, I'll include the link. Uh, an IPO this month that will get a lot <clears throat> of news and articles is ARM. Uh, this is a chip maker, a semiconductor uh, giant. They are uh, one of the largest uh, microprocessors that, that hasn't been public. Uh, SoftBank owns the large majority of this. They will put this. This is a great, a great article on why ARM will be big. I will have more on ARM later. My assumption, somebody asked me about it this week. My assumption is, eh, I think you're you're going to get a chance to buy ARM uh, at a better price than you would with the, uh, the IPO. Um, just know Charter and Disney are in a dispute. If you didn't know, Charter is a, a cable company. And for boomers like me, cable companies, uh, you used to have to pay for the bundle, which was TV and uh, internet. And maybe they threw in phone for, for, for free. Uh, but you used to have to pay for that. The uh, TV portion of the cable box has been downgraded significantly. Nobody wants to pay for cable TV. Everybody's going to YouTube TV. Uh, Sunday Ticket is on YouTube TV. Um, Hulu Live. Uh, Fubo, which Sherry invested in, uh, that's that's what's going on here is Disney pulled ABC and all of the Disney stuff off of Charter, and they're in a dispute. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I know this from being in the cable world. My guess is, and it's been reported this, that uh, the, the real dispute is over the guaranteed percentage of video customers that have to pay for Disney services. Uh, typically, that is up near 80%. So essentially, um, if uh, Charter provides a tier of services, so say they charge $100 for their most uh, popular tier, uh, and they get 80% of the people to subscribe to that tier for $100 or $80 a month, uh, and that includes Disney. Disney will get about $15 of that $100. It's huge. Uh, they may get more these days just because they've got some pricing power. Uh, Charter decided, you know what? F this. If if eighty percent of our people want to to move away from our services um, because we don't have Disney, let them, because they're still going to need our broadband services. So Charter still gets some revenue out of that customer, but Disney gets nothing. So this could mean one billion dollars of losses to Disney. That's why I say don't invest in Disney now. They can't afford $1 billion of losses in revenue right now. This could be huge. Charter has them kind of over a barrel. They don't want to go at it. Um, you know, Again, you have a way to get these services uh, a la carte for free. But how many people are actually going out and, and finding the Disney services for free? Eh, I don't know. Uh, I will include in the newsletter a nice tweet from a whole Mars catalog who's a Tesla bull, a uh, Tesla full self-driving guy. Uh, he included, and this is an interesting thing, uh, Lucid 2022 revenue, $608 million. And LCID is the symbol. Uh, this came about through a SPAC. So understand it, it hasn't been a good performer at all. And people have said, well, I want to trade this one. This gap is up here at seven. The, the Lucid 2022 revenue was $608 million. That's the revenue of the company. The Lucid CEO pay in 2022, 379 million. What CEO gets paid more than 50% of their actual company's revenue? Crazy. Crazy. Okay, let's look at uh, some, some social requests. Uh, Adam from Facebook, he asked me about VFS. This is VinFast Auto. We've talked about this one. I said it's a hype rally. Uh, I think it 100% is a hype rally. I've said you can trade this on the 65 minute at maximum. Uh, I'd like you to trade it on a five minute candle to be uh, perfectly honest with you. It has lost all momentum. There is a really good fortune article that I will include in the newsletter. Uh, it is Buzzy Electric car maker VinFast losing an astounding $83 billion in market value in just one day as investors go in reverse. You can see here on this chart, this is the four-hour algorithm. The four-hour algorithm actually made you 74%. It gets you out today. But that's after a huge slide. This one went all the way up to 85. The algorithm got you in at 1688. Remember, if you want the algorithm, sign up for TrendSpider. Today only, it's $390 for the year, and I give you this algorithm. But yeah, the algorithm got you in at 1688, gets you out here, 
again, I would have said, hey, get out anywhere in the 80s. I probably personally would have gotten out probably in the 30s. To be honest with you, I wouldn't have ridden it all the way up. I don't have balls of steel like that. So, uh, yeah, VinFast, you want to read this article. Here, here's the deal. This is not worth more than $16. This is not worth more than $10. This is 100% a hype. It probably will come down to $8. $8 to $9 is where I think it will come down to. It's a SPAC. You get very little information on a SPAC. The hype has been that these guys are coming to America. They're starting a plant in 2025. It should be finished and they should start deliveries in 2025. That's their expectation. There is so much that could go wrong between now and 2025 that they haven't started construction yet, but they are a successful uh, Vietnamese company. So VinFast Auto, you can read about the owner, you can read about all of their history, you can read about everything. They are not making money. The biggest thing that you need to know about this is they have a low float. And what that means is they have shares outstanding, 21 million. They only have floated to the stock market 7 million shares. Well, how many shares are actually trading? Well, look at the volume here. Uh, I, I don't know if I can actually see the volume. No, it doesn't show me the actual volume. But it, it's trading a significant amount. And so getting a piece of those 7 million shares, that's the problem. Whether you want to buy it or sell it, your broker linking up. You could lose 20% just waiting for your broker to actually sync up and, and find a buyer or a seller for this. So be careful. That's why I say trade in on a five-minute chart. Get your orders in. Make sure your stop losses are there because even if you have a stop loss, there's no guarantee that your stop loss doesn't gap down from that stop loss because they have to buy a, uh, find a buyer and seller. So just be careful. There weren't many scans today that came up with cross-ups. There were just two energy names, Next Gen Energy. Uh, this one uh, is a secondary cross-up. I mean, energy names are just getting, they're flying today. Uh, Devon is up 1.3. Um, we look at, let's see, uh, let's look at our energy names in the core portfolio. Devon, 1.3%. Oxy, 2.2%. Um, PXD, 0.37%, not up as much. Um, and then Exxon in our core portfolio is up 0.54. So NXE it got a cross up. The other cross up kind of shocks me, but it is a big cross up. It is up, uh, what, 10% today? It's up at 59. Uh, KOLD. This one is, uh, let's see, up 7.4%. Uh, this one is, I I'm shocked at it because again, natural gas is so low, but this one is the inverse. Boyle is the uh, three times levered bull. KOLD is the three times levered bear and KOLD got a cross up. So the Boyle, you're probably out. I say buy Boyle under 60. I think you're getting a 70 at some point. Uh, start adding up. The problem is, remember, there's a triple levered ETF, which actually loses value. It's a decaying asset. This isn't something that you buy and you actually own a product or a service or a portion of a company. This is simply traded on the futures. So it decays over time. This is a monthly chart. Do not invest in this since 2013, by the way. Do not invest in this thinking, oh my God, I'm going to make so much money because natural gas is going to fly. This is based on the futures of natural gas. I think you're okay buying it uh, at around 56 I may put 100 bucks on this just to kind of bet on it because natural gas, if you want to see the price of natural gas, go to Finviz and go home and you'll just scroll down to the bottom, bottom left. Natural gas is down 6%. It was down 5% when I started the podcast. So it's down 6%. These are delayed by 15 minutes because I don't pay for the premium version. But yeah, and you can see Tesla is up 2.75 because they had huge China deliveries. Tesla is probably, let's see if Tesla's got a, a cross up here. Because I think Tesla is going back to 350, to be honest with you. Uh, it is at 252. Uh, the buy right was August 22nd at 240. Kind of timed it almost right. I think you're coming between the 280 and 290. I think you're coming for that gap at some point in time. It's really good. So, uh, again, 
If you want any of the links in the portfolio uh, of my stuff, we've got a private Facebook group. Here's my Twitter. Here's my Instagram. Here's the YouTube. Here's the Twitch. Uh, there is Spotify. There is Apple Podcasts. There is the Cash App if you'd like to uh, uh, tip me if you made money. There's my email address. There is Substack, which is where I have my newsletter. Here is all of the li- Here are all the links uh, that, that you just, again, if you want to buy Weeble, uh, if you want to put some money into Weeble, I suggest it. If you want to sign up for TrendSpider, this says 25% off, but it's going to take you to a page that gives you 60% off today only uh, for TrendSpider. Uh, if you want a Tesla, then my Tesla referral is is in the notes. Um, you know, remember, it, it's, you know, get your Tesla. I, I think I might buy a Tesla soon too. I probably have to use one of my friend's referrals. They've used mine in the past, so that's fine. Uh, and remember, if you have time, listen to this podcast, Better Man with Fun Stats, Strats, Tom Lee and Brady Cobb of Sunburn Capital Cannabis. Um, I like both those guys. I think the entire uh, episode, the Tom Lee episode, a portion of the episode is actually a masterclass. It is amazing. So two weeks in a row, they have hit it out of the park with their, uh, their podcast. I really, really like it. Uh, but if you have any questions, hit me up. You, you got all my info over there. Uh, I have gone on for long enough. So, okay, take care. Talk to you. Bye.